time for the mayor jam good morning arti hi good morning good morning good morning akanksha good morning viniti di arti di good morning i just want to introduce both of you uh, briefly for everybody um arti you have served uh, on the association for nearly 6 years now yeah as an executive committee Second member now. and akanksha you have served this committee for nearly 9 years now correct and this is the end of the 9th year that we are moving towards yeah and you've served uh, last 6 uh, years as general secretary that's right yeah and i'm i'm just delighted to have you because i've had the opportunity to serve with both of you um and i'm just very excited about this conversation because i think uh, you are the sort of dream fulfillers uh, i think uh, you know when the association started um if if i remember correctly akanksha we had all debated how we have to serve all our members and correct uh, one of the things we realized was that in our demographic there was lots of aspirations around professional careers but there was also lots of entrepreneurial uh, aspirations amongst our girls so um arti can you tell me a little bit around you know why the mayo marketplace was really conceptualized you know it's very surprising how many different new girls have come forward this year from last year Mm -hmm. so for everybody's benefit this is the second marketplace we're doing march 4th last year was the first one and uh, it it's created a nice buzz and now the thing is the girls are finding it very comfortable to have a platform where they can showcase the good work that they're doing which they have been doing for a while without any of their batchmates knowing what they do seniors within the community if you look at the boys school they always go inside mayo for everything they need but we don't even know what our girls do what they can deliver in terms of services products so the mm -hmm. purpose of the marketplace is to get them out there in one one platform and sort of build this directory where we all can you know reach out to each other for things that we need and also give a boost of confidence to girls who may be running very small businesses i have personally been very surprised that there are as many mayoids running businesses as there are yeah so to add to that uh i think the community needed to just get together and uh you know it's very important as an alumni association our main purpose is to foster better relations amongst different age groups of alumni or across different generations even which we now have because we're almost a 30 year old association as well now so uh it was very important to give people a platform where they could be seen and heard and you know talk about it widely and thanks to social media people across the world will now know what other alumni members are doing and be inspired by them to do their own bit or to showcase their own talent or services or products and of course it's a huge uh, you know confidence boost as well to anybody who's an entrepreneur and uh, you know the first few years are always a struggle for anyone who starts in a new space so i feel that this platform gives them that support and that uh, strength to move forward i have to add a story here because i'll forget it later mm -hmm. so one of the girls who reached out was somebody who was sitting on the fence she got married moved to a different city was a consultant before mm -hmm. and has been doing the family business and she just said you know speaking to you about this mayo setup this safe platform i have found the courage even though i'm not ready with my products or brand or nothing it's a thought in my head but 10th march i will be there and i will put it out there because everybody just means well even if i don't get it right i'm not hassled about it oh that that's just a beautiful story arti and that's the point right when you created this community it's a it's an almost a soft landing for an entrepreneur uh amongst their own friends and uh, alumni to test the product to get feedback to be among safe consumers almost right and i think one of the things i want you both to speak about is a little bit about the ownership structure of the platform itself um as i envision it the uh, alumni association actually owns the platform uh which means that sort of the proceeds that you get from sponsorships go back into the platform 
to subsidize these entrepreneurial journeys. Can you both speak a little bit about that? Aarti, uh, why don't you go first and then? So yes, the platform is owned by the Mayo Girls Alumni Association. And uh, it's not like we're a flushed with funds association, right? We have very few girls, a small alumni base. And so putting together an event like this takes a lot of money. So I will speak later about it. I'm sure at some point this will come up. How, how do we raise funds for it? But yes, all of this money just goes into the event, into delivering the event. And after, if there's anything left, because we're not, we're a not-for-profit, we're a registered society. So there's nothing we can do with the profits. We don't benefit. It'll go into the next event that we do. So it's mm -hmm. always nice. It gives you a little bit of a safety net and a little bit of courage to think big if you're sitting on a little parcel of funds. When yeah. you start from zero, like last year's marketplace, or even this year's marketplace, right? It's a very scary situation because you make commitments to all these girls who are expecting this fabulous event. And then what if you don't have money? Yeah. Scary part. Uh, yeah, Aarti, I, I want to press that point, right? Because if you look at sort of the revenue for the for the, the actual platform, you have the girls come in and take the stalls. They are expecting number of stalls, great footfall. Um, and yet there are event costs. Um, the revenues that they earn, of course, from their products go to them. Yeah. But subsidizing the platform, subsidizing the venue, subsidizing uh, all of that comes from the association funds. And therefore, I think, you know, it's a virtuous cycle when we go out and ask our alumni for funds, for sponsorships, for donations to, to make it clear to them that over a period of time, what this will do is continue to subsidize this access for our entrepreneurs. While the revenues actually and and what what they get is uh, an in, it's sort of an individual entrepreneur's journey, can you speak a little bit more around that vision, also both of you? Ek, do you want to add anything? Okay, I'll go first while she's there. Yeah. Um, see, there are lots of choices to make. For example, let's say choice of venue. Now we all know there are tons of marketplaces in Delhi. You know there is that big Jashna, there is Royal Fables, there is, there are lots of these, but they're expensive. The venues are expensive, the stall cost is expensive, and everything is chargeable, right? Now, we had to start somewhere. We said, listen, let's start at a very basic level and uh, see if everybody will bite, right? So I haven't had a lot of resistance to, let's say, a 15,000 rupee stall. Because we try and pack in way more than what they can get for 15000 They'll get that space all right. But they'll get a whole atmosphere. We're going to spend on advertising this year, etc. We, we try and make, make a rupee go a very long way. We try and be clever about it by choosing venues. Now, I had a choice. I could have done carriages mm -hmm. or I could have done one school barakam. So one would have cost a lot. And where would the money come from? The stall cost would have gone up. That's a detriment for many of the younger kids. This year we did something, batches which are 20, 20 onwards. If they've had the courage to run a business or start a business, we're saying, listen, take a table at half the cost. Pay us anything, something. So at a 4,000 entry point, you can actually put yourself out there and display and sell. So I hope that, so it's clever choices. It's trying to keep costs low to the participants. Just so next year when we reach out, they're like, yeah, yeah, we don't want to miss this marketplace. Yeah, and and I think uh, I think I want to speak a little bit more about that, Arti, because those choices uh, make the platform very, very effective, very, very affordable, and very, very accessible. Whereas a private platform will sort of maximize. Um, I suppose, revenues from stalls, we are thinking about it in a completely different manner. We are saying, look, we've got to subsidize the stall costs and give maximum footfall. So we turn a private platform on its head uh, and give the same market access, visibility, opportunity to the girls. Akanksha, your thoughts on this? Correct. So the idea is to maximize, you know, the visibility and the presence of people and it works both ways right we are providing a wholesome experience for families not just for a group of women who want to come and shop 
that's not the idea or the rationale behind this marketplace it is it is a whole spring fest the vibe the weather is great the vibe is good we've got live music going on we want families to come there or friends to come there and just enjoy enjoy the food and beverages and not just worry that oh i i'm obliged to come here and shop because i know somebody who may you know who may be setting up a store here that's not at all the vibe so it's i feel it stands out for that reason because there's something to offer for everybody beyond just shopping there is a very wholesome curated arts and crafts and gaming corner for children or young adults even so and there's there's massages so there's relaxation and rejuvenating stuff and very nice uh, you know beverages and things so there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of thought put behind ensuring that it's a great day for anybody who's involved in it from either side whether participating or visiting No, oh, that I think I'd, I'd I'd go as far as to say I think this will be the best day anybody can spend in Delhi on a Delhi winter spring day, and delivered on a budget. Oh, fantastic! Absolutely. You know, one of the stories that was most heartening to me, and I want to get behind the scenes a little bit. But let's talk about the different stakeholders, right? There is the girl that's participating. Uh, on the last marketplace, um, I I can't remember her name exactly or her batch, but she had a cosmetics uh, product. and her mom was there she was a mayor girl much junior to us everybody is much junior to me uh she was there and her mom you know came up to me and uh, just said um that you know as an association she said beta we are so happy that you're doing this and uh, it's such a important thing for your association to support your girls and i just thought that was so heartening here was a mom she was supporting her own daughter she was there at a platform that school had created the association had created um and the confidence that she was getting uh you know supporting her own daughter's entrepreneur journey i think that was just it was such a gorgeous moment for me and right. proud of she, she was a 22 or 23 year old and she was our youngest entrepreneur last year at the marketplace and we were so bursting with pride at having somebody so young launch her brand at our event uh, and you know just the leap of faith she took to be part of this and and launch her products there and it was it was a big deal for her as well as for us and that's precisely it uh, for example we set up this um, milestone of you know batch contributions and we just mentioned it once on our batch group so i mean you know it was meant to be just if you can't do an individual contribution of a large amount the group gets together and you know sponsors some part of the marketplace as a batch and that just sound, worked brilliantly it took a life of its own i think within hours we had crossed over like 45000 per batch whoever you know whichever batches were engaged they were engaged they didn't even think twice people just came out and supported and they said please keep us in the loop let us know how this event goes and share all the videos so they're not people who may have remembered that this happened last year but now they're joined with us as well you know they're associated with it they're invested in it you know you yeah, just have uh, to target that mayo feeling in people's hearts there yeah. are girls who are totally disconnected but yeah. that doesn't mean they're not into mayo or the mayo spirit or that mayo nostalgia so it really takes and this is where batch reps come in or whatever the into people from any batch the moment you start the chain and light that little fire right all it needs is that ignition and then people just flow people you haven't heard from in years are signing up and saying yes 1000 bucks so i know five batches which are hitting close to gold right now we're all struggling at that 45000 number so guys come on sunday keep it rolling yeah and you know arty and akanksha you guys are being very um uh humble about the spirit of mayo i think a uh, spirit is one thing i think people wait and watch for execution um and no idea is anything uh until it's executed uh, i know the timeline around uh, the conceptualize of the marketplace i was part of that committee um and it took a while and it took team members like you to come on to fight the elections for ak to sustain herself here and actually deliver the marketplace right because there was a lot of we'll see how they do it and and i think when you build it they will come it's an old statement but you've built it and therefore they're coming and they're seeing 
I think our association, our alumni are seeing that, you know, these folks mean business and uh, they're delivering value for us as an association. So thank you for that. Um, and it's not easy. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about behind the scenes while we're having this Sunday conversation. We already have a mom, Akanksha, who's on chat and she's not put her video on because she has a little little one who's not feeling that well and, and she's right there. Um, Aarti, you run your own uh, entrepreneurial venture. But an event like this, uh, you know, it, it takes a, a full-time sort of effort for so long to run up and execute year on year. I want to talk a little bit about both your personal journeys and getting this off the ground. Arti, so you can go very, first and then, it's, yeah. It's sure. tough. It's not easy. It's very, very tough. In fact, I think this year is tougher than even last year. Last year, everything was new. We were just figuring it out. So while there was that newness, there's just the excitement of just delivering it. But now there's expectations. Now there's learnings from what happened right last year, what didn't happen right last year. And yeah, I mean, it is honestly a full-time job. So I have not been to my office in last three weeks for sure. Yeah. And I <clears throat> I do what I do on the phone, but I'm working from home because there are visits to the venue, there's talking to people, getting the money in. It's one thing to have commitments, but unless I have money in, I can't really pay anybody for anything. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I mean, what would be really nice, I don't know, you haven't asked, but I would like to put a wish list out there is, you know, if everybody took a little piece of it and owned it and ran with it, this can become very easy because we're a really smart bunch of girls. Mm -hmm. And more than smarts, I think a heart is in the right place. And there is just this absolutely crazy fervor to deliver a fantastic event. Mm -hmm. You know? You set these personal standards for yourself and say that I will not have a single complaint from last year repeat. And whoever was happy with whatever, we will try and do more, more, more. Obviously, it'll be a work in progress. You know, we don't have all the resources, but it would be nice to have a little more support, a little more encouragement. So this year's mix has a lot of new participants and some old dropouts. Now, that broke my heart a bit because I would have been like, come on, guys, just do it another year because. It was a miracle what we delivered last year with what we had. You so, know, you know Aarti, it takes uh, decades to build institutions and platforms, you know, and the repeatability of it uh, and the support you need uh, from participants, from alumni, uh, from sponsors, it's, 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 it's nonstop, it's 24 seven and it's year on year. And, uh, your personal commitment to the associations, both of you, uh, to make this happen. Uh, I hope, you know, all the alumni are listening and they figure out a way in which they can give this platform sustainable support in whatever way, you know, whether it's a financial contribution, whether it's volunteering, whether it's bringing sponsorships, uh, we need all hands on deck. Um, Akanksha? Uh, I, yeah. Yes, Vantidi, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, you know, it... There are obviously days that you feel very discouraged while planning an event of this scale. Yeah. And then you realize, you know, why you're doing it. And that just motivates you to do even better and bigger and, you know, possibly than the year before. And uh, Artiti, I, I am very much in agreement with Vinitidi also on the point that it takes time to build a property. And, you know, uh, any sort of flagship event, it takes time to build it. and. So I would not be discouraged or, you know, uh, put down by any lack of commitment on behalf of any individuals. Uh, yeah. Everybody's got a lot going on in their lives at this point. You know, post-COVID, everybody's lives have become so much more hectic and, you know, always, everyone's always on the move. But uh, thanks to, you know, a lot of social media connectivity everyone's also connected on a very day-to-day -day level so it's much easier to reach out and um, gather that support from the alumni community or anywhere else as well because uh, you know it only takes a few minutes of time a once time to re make that effort and once people realize that they're very quick to respond and so i think it's just about stirring the dragon and then it yeah. just takes life of its own
you know uh, akanksha again you're being humble about this but i i want to reiterate those of us who um serve the community um we have a strong work ethic um and i think the community responds when they engage and i think art is coming from that point that we will put in the hard work the committee members put in the hard work the grind work and they're looking for engagement they're looking for support they're looking for people to just show up on the 10th right i mean if you can look at levels of effort or engagement you can be a sponsor you can contribute as a patch you can take a stall but you can actually just show up and what you're more... showing up is half the work done yeah, yeah. and <laughs> we are happy for all levels of engagement um and i think that's something uh, arti and i were talking before arti this uh, a personal story around uh, you know why people serve the community you mentioned that somebody had gone through something personal and wanted yeah. to be part of the marketplace right without, without uh, you know taking any names around their privacy what does what has the community engaging uh, done for you i know i formed friendships with those uh, akanksha you arti it's it's become a very important part of my life to engage with the mayo community and 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 completely girls. completely so speak a little bit about that both of you you know it's a sisterhood and it's fantastic so i think there are one thing we need to understand is there are boys and there are girls boys work very differently as alumni they get out of school they get out of undergrad postgrad whatever and they're part of all those three communities and they show up and they don't need a lag time for women you leave an institution you're trying to figure out your careers then at some point pressure to get married not get married whatever then dealing with the marriage having children the in-laws moving cities you know women just end up pulling a lot of the heavy lifting you know heavy weight and uh, so it it takes us about 15 20 years to even think about saying okay now i, I want to think about myself and you know i don't have any friends i've just realized i want to reconnect hmm. right so i think that's one reason why we do what we do because when you connect when you connect you're stronger and this personal story is right so one of our committee members went through something deeply deep uh, a deep loss let's say and instead of saying it's so easy to say guys count me out this year i don't have the bandwidth to deal with this but that wasn't her she said listen marketplace is coming up i am doing stuff yeah just keep it on so engaging with the community was part of her healing uh, yeah, i i certainly felt that you know last year when uh, when when i lost dad that is very true there was a diwali party and i was saying you know i can stay away from this because i'm grieving personally and um i'm so glad i didn't make that decision because coming to that little diwali thing was like uh, there were fellow healers there there were everybody's gone through loss and suffering and when you come there it was like my god this actually aids your healing um absolutely yes i agree the en- the energy is just uh, you know flow in the right way i'd say that because i think or uh, as me whites we are all wired a certain way uh, there is a minuscule part of all of us that's wired a certain way and it just falls into place whenever you're in the presence of other you know alumni members or community members and you connect on so many different levels that uh, over the years there's been so many un- unseen for- friendships that have formed that one would have never imagined Yes. or you know you've just created a network that you can depend on and lean on for all kinds of support it could be emotional it could be financial it could be professional support so i feel it's it's a full circle you know it comes yeah. it brings you full circle really uh, arti and akanksha i want to go back to the future of the platform you know and and i'd encourage you to be as visionary and as ambitious because when we serve on the committee Uh, we serve our time we serve our tenure and then we pass on the baton right you have set in stone a platform that has to be sustained by future committees uh, what's your vision for the marketplace both of you how do you envision it growing what's your blue sky thinking on it both arti and akanksha 
See, this I thing had to, to go from. to multiple cities because our girls are everywhere. We've got girls in Guwahati who are doing great businesses. We've got a whole bunch of people in Nepal, Bombay, Bangalore. And right now, it's at a level where they don't want to spend money on the airfare, travel, bringing bulky goods to Delhi. So apart from a cost of a stall, there's this additional cost of 25, 30K which they may not be comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. So if we're able to continue to be relevant and meaningful, hopefully we will take this platform to different cities. Mm-hmm. We will need local girls out there to, you know, run support, this yeah. up and run with it. Mm-hmm. We will need the support of the boys' school, which is not a small thing. They have really stepped up. And in Delhi, at least, I know that we ask for sponsorships, we get money. We ask for whatever, you know, all the food stalls are being done by boys. It's just very nice. They're encouraging the wives to participate. So we have a lot of these other communities also to depend on. Then maybe we will start, once we have a critical mass, let's say 100 girls who we know are in three of the major cities we're running businesses, then we can have little edits. Mm-hmm. We could do a Rocky edit, a Christmas edit. We could do stuff like that. We, I think it would be fantastic if we had a platform somewhere where we could do digital things. Like imagine Founders Day flash sale. Mm-hmm. Everybody on one platform, digital, everybody puts out five or five items from their portfolio and says half price for Mayo Founders. And we're able to sell it online. You could be sitting in San Francisco. You could be sitting in Guwahati. It doesn't matter. That's oh, the way. Aarti, that's, uh, you know, it's counterintuitive when I was thinking about it. But this is this is so important for you to say that we'll make it local available. Because if accessibility is part of the vision, then nobody has to always congregate in Delhi. Absolutely. Uh, we have to do this in places where we have the critical mass on the ground. The other thing is digital. I mean, I remember when we debated elections, right? Why should we vote digitally? Uh, It's kind of similar because we wanted to democratize the process. Just because you couldn't show up in Ajmer didn't mean that you uh, shouldn't vote. Just because you can't afford the additional money to come to Delhi, which is a cost, which is a high cost, doesn't mean the association won't remain democratic and try to create these edits and local uh, versions of the Mayo marketplace, whether it's Bombay, Bangalore, Nepal, as you're mentioning, Guwahati. Um, it's where our alumni are, is where we'll meet to serve them. So it's very heartening to hear both the local vision and the digital vision. Both of them actually are democratic forces, right? Uh, digital for everybody anywhere and local for accessibility. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. Akanksha, how do you see being able to raise the quality and prestige of the marketplace. Do you think we need to sort of involve some non-Mayo, big uh, sort of private, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurs to come in and 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 do master classes for our entrepreneur, etc.? Do you do you envision that happening? So the marketplace would evolve with every year, right? We don't have to stick to one format. Yeah. Uh, you feel the pulse of the people for that year, and you build it accordingly. Yeah, And uh, of course, we are open to all of these collaborative efforts. And we we should, of course, get to make it bigger. We have to think bigger. And there's we are constantly getting queries from a lot of non-Mayo community related people as to whether they could take part in it and be a part of the platform. And we have to just turn them away at this point. But, you know. You never know where the future takes us. And uh, yeah, you know, it could grow way, way bigger and have a lot more to give in to the community as a whole, not just the mere community. Yes, uh, you know, I certainly see that. Um, I think the key word when I'm hearing you speak is it will evolve. Definitely. Uh, It will continue to serve the community. And even if it involves people outside of the community, uh, we will always subsidize the costs that are... Yeah, always prioritize our Mayo family first. Always prioritize always. the Mayo entrepreneur uh, and the Mayo uh, participant in every way. Uh, it, you know, uh, So I think, again, I am so proud of the work that uh, this committee has done in executing... Well, we learned from the best, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, 
any uh, challenges that you're facing, even in the run up to, you've got 10, 15 days before we go on 10th March, uh, Arti's already called for support on bat sponsorships, anything that we can put out there that you need support with, uh, that, you know, our alumni association members listening to this uh, conversation between the three of us can come and help you with? What are the challenges in the last mile? I think a commitment to be present. Commitment. Mainly. Yeah. Honestly, that's our only challenge. We are very sorted on all other fronts. I would. I feel very confident yeah, to say sorted. that. We are. We are absolutely set on every other front. We just want people to show up and have a good time. That's it. That's there's not. No, there's no money cost show. involved. There is only. We just want your time, yeah. and your presence to come and see and support your fellow Mayo entrepreneurs of that's Mayo not, in any way. Is. But nobody's allowed to come alone, okay? Everybody yeah, has to call people. Yeah. You, have to bring, you have to bring your mommy gang. You have to bring your aunt. You have to bring it's, the bachas. It's a Sunday. Bring, bring everybody. Bring everybody. Oh, that's awesome. This is, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to the 10th. Uh, I, I, again, on behalf of the entire association, every alum and the current girls, I thank this committee for the wonderful service that you're doing. I mean, I'm full of gratitude for what you do for the community, both of you, uh, Aarti and Akanksha. Uh, you should be very proud of the work you do. I'm very proud of the work that you do. And I'm really looking forward to the 10th. Thank you very much. But oh, you know, there's this very, very thing kind also word. that we all split our tasks in the committee. So while we're talking to the marketplace and that's something I may do, I mean, I can say it now and I'll get blasted for it later, but we've got a taskmaster for a president who makes sure we're always on our toes. <laughs> Each body dinner. You know, I thought, you know, thought you know, we'd have one, didn't you? Yeah, and you know, uh, I have to uh, mention this again. Uh, Pooja uh, came on uh, as president. She's had multiple hats to wear. Uh, we know we have a policy agenda in school. We've been successful there. We know we had a, a sustained uh, igniting minds agenda. We uh, delivered that year on year. Uh, the third property that was going to be created was this marketplace. And what I've found so different in other committees and uh, life organizations that have served in that the spirit of collaboration and continuity is so strong uh, that a series of, of leaders that come in do their bit, pass on the baton, and continue to raise raise the bar. So, uh, again, hats off to this com this this committee, and we are looking forward to the tenth. Thank you, thank guys. You, thank you, Thank you, everybody, everybody, for being a part of this conversation. We look forward to meeting you. We look forward to ideating with you, and we're looking forward to have a really good time on March tenth with everybody. And on this note, as we end, batch of 2001 has hit gold sponsorship. I've just got the text 50K in the bag. Excellent. We I know that, uh, you know, we, 1994 is uh, close to that number and hopefully uh, we will get there by the end of today. <laughs> yeah, same. 2002 will also lock it up by today. Excellent. Wow. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Thank, thank you to today. all thank our you. friends who didn't, you know, take it didn't take them a heartbeat to come out and support the cause. So a big thank you to everyone who's been involved in any way. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Have a nice Sunday, guys. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Mayo Girls Alumni Association. If you're a Mayoite and wish to participate, email us on mayocollegegirlsalumni at gmail.com.